Hey, who's excited for microbiology? Huh? Huh? Of course you are. All right, let me throw you some treats. Here we go. It's ringing treats. So you're always gonna see corgis in my videos. I have four corgis and they're always running through the shot um, and usually barking and stuff. So my apologies about that. Um, okay, so we're gonna start our first video. And the way this works is I try to do videos on a PowerPoint um, in about 10 minute chunks. And the reason I do that is because um, I find that people get really bored after that. Um, this down just a little bit there we go so but the all the links will be posted in talon um they can also be found on my youtube channel um but yeah i'll have them posted in talon for you okay so don't panic if you haven't taken science for a long time you know for years for decades i start at a very basic level um so actually some of you who ha have taken a and p you know last semester and haven't taken a lot of science you know might find these uh first you know, at least good review, you know, but not overly taxing. But I like to start at a very basic level and then just build you guys up from there. Okay, so PowerPoint one, chapter one, um, we're gonna cover some main themes of microbiology. Um, now, first of all, you'll notice in the picture here that we have all of these different little bacteria and they, it kind of looks like a bowl of Skittles. So that is more for, you know, photography's sake. I wish that bacteria under the microscope came in all these beautiful colors because they'd be really easy to differentiate. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case. And you'll find that out when we get into lab. Um, they're basically uh, pink or purple, and that's about it. So um, yeah, don't come in this wide array of colors, unfortunately. All right, so first of all, let's define what microbiology is. Microbiology is simply defined as the study of living things that are too small to be seen without magnification, or they're too small to be seen by the naked eye. Now, one thing I want you to notice right off the bat is that I put quotes around living. And that's because a few of the organisms that we are gonna talk about in this class do not actually fit the definition of life. The biggest of those being the category of viruses, okay, like COVID-19. So obviously we can tell from this global pandemic that COVID-19 is certainly, it can be passed from person to person. It can cause infections, you know, sometimes unfortunately fatal infections. Um, but if COVID-19 doesn't have access to a living human cell, in this case, the cells of our respiratory tract, it doesn't do anything. So if it's just laying on a countertop or on a surface, it can't replicate by itself. And that is the true definition of life. So viruses are truly not alive. So we tend to talk of, we don't call them cells, we call them you know, infectious particles, um, but certainly they can still wreak havoc. So we're definitely gonna talk a lot about viruses. The other category that would fit into this would be things called prions, which cause diseases like mad cow disease. Okay, so really we're talking about really, really small organisms, hence the name microorganisms. And in this case, in this class, we're gonna focus on those that cause disease. But yeah, we absolutely need to use a microscope. And sometimes even these things are so small that even the highest powered microscope can't detect them either. So in your textbook, um, when you hear me talk about them, some of the common terms are microorganisms or microbes. Um, some of the other terms you might hear are germs. Germs tends to mean all microorganisms like bacteria and viruses. Um, we're gonna separate them into categories. The biggest ones that we're gonna cover are gonna be bacteria and viruses, which are totally different. You also um, may hear the term agent, which just means whatever organism is causing the disease that we're talking about. One of the things I wanna get across to you, because when you take a microbiology class, you know, obviously we're talking about microorganisms that cause disease, right? But Unfortunately, what that does is students tend to get this skewed view that all microorganisms are bad. All bacteria 
for example, are bad and will hurt you. And that is just not the case, okay? So 99.99999% of microorganisms don't cause any harm. They live on us, they live around us. And actually, if we weren't covered with a lot of bacteria, we would not be as healthy as we are. So a lot of them, especially bacteria in your gut, um, are absolutely essential for human life and they help us process food properly. They help um, boost up our immune system. So yeah, don't be hating on bacteria. Um, obviously, we're gonna talk about the species that do cause disease, but most of them don't. Okay, also, you wouldn't have any flavor in your food um, if we didn't have microorganisms. I mean, we'd all be eating like sterile astronaut food, which would be disgusting and gross. So yeah, you know, the reason blue cheese is blue um, is because you have a fungus that produces um, a blue color in that cheese, okay? And it makes it really flavorful. It's not bad for you. So keep that in mind. Most microorganisms do not harm you and actually a lot of them help you. Also, microorganisms are found everywhere. So whether you're breathing them in, they're in the water, the ocean, lakes, rivers, land, soil, surfaces, um, they're covered, you know, you are covered with them. In fact, the, you know, the commonly known statistic is you have 10 times the number of bacterial cells in and on you as you have the number of cells that make up your body. So yeah, you are absolutely coated with bacteria and that's one of the reasons you're as healthy as you are. So microbes are found, like I mentioned, um, in water. And a lot of times they form the basis of the food chain, whether it's in oceans, you know, in salt water, fresh water, such as lakes and rivers. Um, so, you know, people think it's no big deal to dump like toxic waste into a water system. But what you end up doing is killing, you know, the bacteria that are the basis of the food chain. And then you see everything else up the chain start to die. So algae, um, fish, other invertebrates, and you end up killing everything. And it's because you've destroyed the microbes. So yeah, they're found in water. They're found in soil. Um, microbes are responsible for nitrogen cycling, which we absolutely need. Um, decomposition, you know, of organisms that happen to die outside, you know, so when you're driving along and you see some roadkill and you see your puffed up raccoon, you know, those are microbes that are breaking down organic compounds. And so we absolutely need that to happen to complete the cycle of life. So one category of organisms that we are not going to talk about in this class are ones that are termed photosynthetic. And an organism that is photosynthetic is one that is typically green, like a plant. And what that means is they can harvest light energy from the sun and they can make their own food and produce oxygen. So basically they don't need to grow on us, okay? Any organism that can grow in or on us needs us as a food source. And so we are not going to worry about organisms that are photosynthetic or green. They're really cool and they can be very interesting, but they don't cause disease in humans. And so, yeah, we're kind of not going to worry about them. Okay, so one thing that microbes do um, in and on you, like I mentioned, they help digest food. Um, it, uh, organisms, and especially E. coli in our gut, help produce B vitamins. Um, they produce vitamin K, which is essential for blood clotting. So yeah, they live in our colon. We give them a nice nutrient rich environment. And then in return, they help us with blood clotting and they help us, you know, produce essential vitamins that we need for our health. So basically, you know, they're paying the rent, definitely. So I know a lot of times like on TV, you might hear about certain outbreaks, um, you know, that have to do with oh, there's a bad strain of E. coli. So keep in mind, that's just one strain of E. coli. Um, there are lots of strains of E. coli that are actually really good for you. And it's, you know, completely normal to have them living in our gut. And in fact, you know, you definitely need them. Okay, so I'm right at the 10 minute mark. I'm gonna stop there, get this uploading, um, and then pick up here next. All right, thanks.